For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so previously we saw that ammonium ion can be transported safely from tissues to the liver by way of glutamine. Glutamine being the main sort of amino acid that carries nitrogen through the blood and around the body. Now that doesn't have to happen exclusively with glutamine. It can also occur with another amino acid, alanine. And that alanine is specifically coming from the skeletal muscles. Okay, so what's going to be going down is that in the muscle we're going to be breaking down proteins um, and we'll basically take amino groups as uh, we're basically taking amino groups from the muscle out through the blood to the liver. And we're going to have a little cycle here and we're going to see what that's going to look like. Okay, so we'll start off in a skeletal muscle cell. We'll make our way through the blood and eventually to the liver. So let's start here in the skeletal muscle cell with glucose. So in the skeletal muscle cell, we're going to be talking about taking glucose and metabolizing it to pyruvate via glycolysis. Once we get that pyruvate, that pyruvate will undergo a transamination reaction catalyzed by alanine aminotransferase. And the reason it's named alanine aminotransferase is because it's going to turn that pyruvate into alanine because alanine is the alpha amino acid counterpart to pyruvate being an alpha keto acid. So where is that amino group coming from? Well, it's coming from a transamination reaction, uh, specifically from glutamate. Where is that glutamate coming from? Well, we're breaking down proteins in the skeletal muscle into amino acids. And of course, those amino acids have uh, nitrogens on them. And those will end up on glutamate. And that glutamate can supply that nitrogen for this amino transferase reaction. And so what we're going to do is we're basically taking this nitrogen here that's, from the, that's a breakdown product from those proteins and tacking it onto pyruvate to make alanine. Now, that alanine that's produced can be sent in the blood through to the liver. And once it's in the liver, it'll basically undergo that same amino transferase reaction, that same transamination reaction to get pyruvate back. And what happens to that amino group? Well, it's undergoing the, this whole thing is happening in the, as a, a transamination reaction opposite what occurred in the skeletal muscle cell. That alanine will be turned into pyruvate and this amino group will end up being attached to alpha ketoglutarate to produce glutamate, except all that glutamate is in the liver. Oops. Um, so now what can happen with that glutamate is it can be you can undergo the glutamate dehydrogenase step to free up that uh, ammonium ion, which of course can be excreted safely as urea after going through the urea cycle. Or that nitrogen could be used to supply uh, transamination reactions to produce aspartate, um, which can also go through, the, through to the urea cycle. The point is, though, that we're basically getting the the nitrogen that are that are that are sort of the products of breaking down proteins in the muscles out into the liver, right? So we're taking, let's do that in a different color. We're taking these guys out through the blood and to the liver so that they can eventually be excreted safely in urea. Now, this the whole situation that we're talking about is the glucose alanine cycle, but I haven't actually talked about a cycle quite yet. I haven't finished it. I've just talked about it one way going from the skeletal muscle to the liver. Once this pyruvate is produced in the liver, it can undergo gluconeogenesis to produce glucose, which can be sent back to the skeletal muscle via the blood, right? So that uh, that glucose can be broken down for energy in the skeletal muscle cell. So the point here basically is that uh, the ammonium ion uh, from extrahepatic tissues is not only transported by glutamine. That's one point here. You can also, it, it, in muscle tissue, alanine can do the job, especially because this contributes to getting glucose back to the muscle tissue, um, so that that, that skeletal muscle t tissue can can um, go through and metabolize that for energy. Um, now, this might this sort of schematic might look kind of familiar, kind of the muscle and liver kind of with a cycle. Um, if you recall, there is um, another cycle, the Cori cycle, um, that does a sort of similar thing. This works well with the Cori cycle, basically to get glucose back to metabolically active tissue, um, 
and we're kind of killing two birds with one stone. In addition to doing that, you're getting the nitrogen out from the skeletal muscle to the liver to be de detoxified. Okay, so that's basically the glucose alanine cycle. I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.